Welcome to Happy Crappy Paints Gloomhaven. This is part one, the Inox Brute. This is what he looks like when we're done. Paints for the Inox Brute can be divided into three groups. The bone color and the shell and not for the armor. Uh, the brown for the leather and fur. And then the silver and metal colors for the weapon. And then of course, washes. Pause the video here if you like to take notes. And then uh, when you have assembled the colors, uh, come back and we'll start with priming mini the miniature. And uh, f as always, uh, when you if you've been following me, I like to prime my minis using white because that uh, helps me out uh, seeing all the details and also helps me with the highlights because I like to speed paint. The first layer is Gorthor Brown. Size of the brush is going to be for this whole mini uh, two zeros or double zero and a zero. I think I have for the eyes a five zero but most of it is going to be with a two zero brush or double zero brush. So you go through brown uh, watered for the first first layer of the fur. I'm trying a different technique here if you watch my other videos. I, I do not dilute or mix the color with water on the palette. Instead I I overload the brush with water uh, as I you can see that I dip the water the brush into water and then I I dilute the paint to the consistency I like on the palette this is a technique I find work better because um, you can control how much paint you get on the brush and how thick it is uh, easier but it's all a matter of taste uh, you could add a couple of drops of water and just mix the whole thing on the palette. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be painting the miniatures for Gloomhaven as we are using them while we're playing the game. So this will not be a series that will have uh, continuously recurring episodes. There will be an episode every once in a while when we broke, break open a box and I paint the miniature that we're using. If there are any particular miniatures that you'd like me to paint out of the six base miniatures, um, let me know and I might prioritize any of them. Next up is adding a highlight to the fur. For that I'm using Raycarth Flash and a, an old brush I don't use very often uh, to do a almost like a dry brushing technique leaving a little more paint than normal on the brush than when dry brushing but not too much paint and then lightly just brush over the fur so that only the very raised areas of the miniature gets paint on them so the paint is is w more wet than uh, or the brush is more wet than on a dry brushing technique but uh, it's pretty much the same thing uh, this adds a lot of nice looking texture to the fur. Um, be careful though to not overdo it too much. I also decided that Raycarth Flash would be the actual skin tone underneath the fur so I used that to dry brush a little heavier on the face with Raycarth Flash and also the hands. Um, so I was not so gentle with the dry brushing or the semi dry brushing on the face and on the hands. Moving over to the cape using Mornfang Brown as the base color for the cape. As you can see I'm using water and diluting uh, the paint uh, using water in the brush and then pulling paint out onto the palette uh, to have the right consistency. Uh, here you can also see some of the benefits of using a, a white primer. Uh, the highlights of the very tops of the fur is going to be uh, lighter. Some of the white is going to shine through and most of the paint is going to pool at the recesses of the mini. Um, this is a quick way of, of, um, of um, removing some steps if you really want to do a speed paint to dilute the color quite a bit and then just do a layer less than normal 
or don't come back and do highlights. Just let the base primer underneath show through. Adding some shadow to the cape using Rhinox Hide and doing a wet blending technique <coughs> to do to paint in <coughs> the more recessed areas of the coat and the bottom parts of the coat. If you'd like, you could actually mix some Abaddon Black into the Rhinox Hide and continue to add wet blending of or use wet blending to add dark shadows to the very bottom edges of the cape uh, and the very most deep recessed areas of the cape and so on and underneath. I didn't do that, but it's certainly something that can be done. Uh, the inverse is also doable uh, uh, and something that I would do if I'd like to spend more time on the mini and that is to to lighten up the uh, the brown, Mornfang brown with maybe some white and paint the, the raised areas like over the shoulders a little bit more. You can see that I added uh, some shadow to the uh, shoulders of the cape where it, uh, the cape actually is on his shoulders. I also used Rhinox Hide for the inside of the shield, for the wood. The reason I'm using a, a very, very dark brown here is that I'm going to use dry brushing a little bit later to bring out some of the details of the wood, the wood grain. Here I'm correcting some areas where that I missed in my first uh, ones over for the cape. I missed a few areas. I'm doing them now. And to the right there, I have no idea what that actually is. I decided that it is part of the mantle or the cape. Um, it did not look that way, but yeah, what was actually on there? It could have been some other type of cloth or something. Uh, it probably actually is, when I think about it, the sheath for the sword. Uh, but regardless, I painted it brown and pretended that was part of the cape. Uh, for the armor pieces, I use a shafted bone. I, I do think that they are actual shells. His armor is made of shells, um, from a like a big, huge land crab or something. Uh, so a shafted bone for the armor pieces. I'm also using a shafted bone for all of the skulls and all of the fur that's not part of the cape. Uh, the fur and the skulls and uh, the leggings, the fur on the legs, are all going to get different shades of wash to differentiate them from each other. Uh, so for now they're all going to look the same, since I'm using the same the same color, but they're going to look different soon enough. Here I'm also making more corrections. Uh, I I thought I saw that the cape was showing through in between the arm and the uh, hip, so I added add a little bit of a darker brown there. I also couldn't decide for the longest time what the little round armor pieces on the belt was going to be. If I wanted to paint that the same shell color or a different, maybe stone or metal. Or maybe bronze. In the end, I did decide that it was. I wanted them actual, actually, to be uh, pieces of shell as well. So I ended up using a shaft of bone for the round armor pieces on the the belt. It took a while for me to also decide if I wanted the the middle part of the bone armor, which almost looks like a ceremonial armor, not an actual armor that you would use in battle. Uh, the round pieces in the middle there, the buttons, if they were to be metal or something, like a jewelry or something ornamental that would hold the armor together, or if it was just another piece of the bone, um, I ended up deciding it to be bone. Uh, so I decided to paint that in chapter bone as well. The um, posture the, that this mini have is really strange. It looks like he's, his knees are together and he's almost falling over. 
or he has a like muscle cramps in his stomach or something because he's ah uh, like almost hunching over and then at the same time his his arms are wide uh with the sword is out in one direction the shield the other so it looks like a really really unnatural pose uh, <laughs> i think this is the the uh, from a how he's constructed the worst of, of the ones that I've seen so far in Gloomhaven. Using Steel Legion Drab for the uh, leather pieces, which are the boots, the belt, and also the handle on the inside of the shield. To the left and right on the belt, uh, there actually isn't any indication that the belt actually continues on the outside of the armor. It might actually be hidden on the inside of the armor. I decided to paint the belt on the outside anyway, otherwise it would, in my mind, look strange with just a few strips of light brown in between the round armor pieces. But you may, you know, think differently, but that's what I decided to do. Uh, for the inside of the shield, I used Steel Legion Drab and to, to dry brush the uh, Rhinox hide to get the wood grain to come out a little bit. Uh, this is a, an occasion where you definitely do not want to overload the brush with paint. Because uh, you will get paint on pieces of the miniature that you don't like. You could see that I actually went back and did some corrections there with the Shepter Bone. Uh, on his uh, uh, left brace. Um, shield, I'm using, use, decided that I want it all to be metal, just for simplicity and speed. Probably be black or green or red or blue, and so some other bright color if you'd like. Um, I decided not to not really spend the time. But I did want it to give some texture, so I'm using lead belcher as, the, as a dark dark silver for the whole of the shield, and I'm going to I'm going to come back with uh, Runefang Steel to highlight the top parts of the shield to add, add a little bit of a 3D effect. Um, you could do that with layers of Null Oil as well. If you only have uh, one silver color, you could use that one and then darken the bottom half of the shield with uh, a few extra layers of Null Oil. I decided to use Runefang for the edge of the shield and also the edge of the sword to make it look a little different and a little interesting. You can see even at this point I have not had not yet decided if I wanted the the round armor pieces on his belt to be something different than than shells or carapace or whatever you call it. So you can see I'm using rune fang to the top of the shield cone and also the top of the middle part of the shield. It doesn't actually show that well uh, on camera, but it is actually quite a nice 3D effect uh, that does actually show when, you know, when I'm not lighting the or lighting the miniature with the, the lamp that I got there. Right, here we go. Finally painting the uh, belt buckle. This is the second most strange thing with this miniature. The kneecaps made of skulls. Very, very impractical. Also makes me think that this armor is actually more ceremonial than actual something that the Ionox would wear in battle. Um, they, th what I'm painting now is with Rhinox hide is imaginary leather straps that would hold these skulls onto his knees. There is some erased area there that I'm imagining is you know, straps. Um, starting with the shading, Agrax Earth Shade for the t uh, the muscles on the fur. I just t decided to not use Agrax all over the fur, but just in the recessed areas and on the bottom parts, or yeah, the parts that are in shadow. So underneath the armor pieces, on his chest and his arms, 
and his thighs. Also using Agrax to bring out some of the details on the face. And, and also the hands, of course. The cape I added, I was more liberal with the wash. I decided to actually not go back and highlight or dry brush the fur on his cloth. That's something that I normally do when I, I uh, paint uh, fur. But I thought it looked good enough without that. But I, something that m will look good is if you use a, a very light brown or maybe a silver color even to highlight the very edges of, of parts of the, the cape, the fur cape. Also using Agrax for the leggings on the chapter bone to make the Shabdi bone leggings be like a light brown color and then also for the leather boots. Seraphim Sepia is a nice wash that adds a yellow orange tint. So using that on the shell pieces. I was a little careful in the beginning because I didn't know if I wanted to do to do shadowing and, and paint the wash on and then in the end I actually decided that, that I wanted to apply the whole of the shells and the bones with with seraphim sepia so you can see that I'm becoming less and less um, careful in how I apply the paint I'm still not using a lot of it um, I did not want it to pull everywhere And also serve him up here for the skulls. And the horns. You can see that I've used Raycart's flesh. I don't think I filmed that actually. To highlight the, the head on the back underneath his horns as well. Uh, Null oil. I'm going to use that to shade the cloth. Uh, on his loin. The, like the loin cloth. And then also the shield and the sword. Comment on the sword and the sword hilt. I cheated and did not decide to paint the hilt in a different color or even the jewel on the hilt. Something that absolutely can be done. But uh, if you if you know my videos, have, have seen some of the other ones I've done, you know that I'd, I'd rather be playing than painting. And the goal of my painting videos is to help more people paint their miniatures for their board games hopefully fast and quick and make them look really good uh, because it's fun but to paint and but mostly because it's so much more fun to play a game with painted miniatures than unpainted miniatures um, making a correction here I missed a piece of the shell to the l uh, to the left there of the mini you can see I'm going back with Seraphim Sepia and, and adding it Adding it to the shell pieces left of his hip, the hip armor. Null oil for the sword to bring out some of the detail. It is a little contradictory that his weapon is has lots of scars on it, and these armor pieces around his belt has lots of notches and things on it, making it look like it's seen battle. But the shield does not have anything, so he's <laughs> probably really crappy at parrying probably not pairing at all so the shield is not used or maybe it's new just found it <laughs> bought a new one uh, and none of the other armor pieces sh show any wear and tear it's kind of strange all right uh, rhinox hide using that for the pieces that uh, connect or, or help put or hold the armor pieces together uh, you could also use Runefang steel here if you want it to be metal rather than, rather than silver. You can see on the the this armor piece here that I make a big mistake. I basically just blot. See there? The big brown thing. Uh, but don't worry, I'm going to do highlights now. So using highlight with 
uh, sharp to bone on the very edges of the armor because you can make corrections. If you make mistakes there you can just add a sharp to bone on there. So paint the top parts of all of the uh, armor pieces and bone pieces, shells, and also the horns with the sharp to bone to, uh, to add a nice 3D effect. So all the edges and all the tops of the armor. And they'll really, really make uh, the mini stand out. I decided to use Screaming Skull to highlight the skulls. You could just do Sharp to Bone here. But Screaming Skull is a little more white. Uh, but you can just mix white and do Sharp to Bone a little bit. And then use that, uh, use that to highlight the skulls. But regardless, I decided to use Screaming Skull instead of Sharp to Bone. But as you can see, it's it's just really a, a lighter version of a chapter bone, really. You can mix that easily with a little bit of white. This is not actually that easy to highlight the skulls without hiding or distorting or destroying the 3D effect that you have from the wash. So brush very lightly to only hit the very raised areas on the front of the skulls and then the top the forehead there you can you know paint normally uh, I tried to use some screaming skull for a few pieces of the armor decided that it did not make too much of a difference so I did stop that decided to use screaming skull for the eyes I didn't want them to be pure white I wanted them to be more of a, like a eggshell white or yellow so I decided to use screaming skull skull instead of white for the eyes here I'm using the 5-0 brush to get more control. Runefang steel to go back over the null oil on the weapon uh, to bring out the highlights. Also painting the earrings. The earrings looking at the artwork is probably made out of bone but I thought it was more it was more interesting to make them like silver earrings. Um, they don't show that much anyway so it doesn't really matter. They're very hard to see. And then the edges of the sword and the top parts of the shield. And now you're done. Now it's just what remains is just to paint the base in your preferred color. If I don't use Abaddon Black, I normally use a, a gray, like a ashen gray or administratum gray. Uh, but normally just to use Abaddon, Abaddon Black. You could, if you'd like, add tufts of grass or do other base styling if you'd wish. Uh, I decided not to, for this one at least. And uh, and that's it for now. Um, uh, su subscribe to uh, to my channel if you like this, and then I will be back with the scoundrel next, because that's the other character that we're using. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.